our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. Our planet is warming up, but to what degree will the climate change in the future? In order to find out, scientists are focusing on 50 so-called essential climate variables. Each piece is needed to better understand the big picture, a bit like trying to solve a massive scientific puzzle. There are some variables that are much more difficult to take into account and to predict than others. But what we are sure about is that human activity is what has caused global warming in recent decades. And it's set to continue and will be difficult to limit to two degrees. Jean Jouzel is one of the world's leading glaciologists. He's played a big part in proving the link between CO2 and climate change over the past 800,000 years, an essential piece of the puzzle. As a long-standing member of the International Panel on Climate Change Bureau, he's closely involved in compiling its next assessment report. We met Jouzel at the Pierre et Marie Curie University in Paris, where his institute Pierre-Simon Laplace runs a master's program. Satellites allow us to carry out research in a different way than before. If you look at the change in temperature, for instance, we've only been able to develop a truly global vision of our planet in the past 30 years thanks to satellites. Let's take a look at another piece of this intricate puzzle. At the Académie des Sciences in Paris, we spoke to Annie Cazenave, a lead author at the IPCC and an expert on space-based techniques for studying sea level variations. Her work is a puzzle in itself. The sea level is linked to every element within the climatic system, the ocean, the atmosphere, ice and even continental waters. So it's a sort of puzzle. There are various contributions and then you have the sea's answer to global warming. So we try to explain the rise of sea levels as the sum of these various elements. For nearly two decades now, the ocean surface has been measured from space. The rise of sea levels has doubled to 3.3 millimeters per year on average, but some areas are more vulnerable than others. There are two main causes for the rise in the sea levels. First of all, the temperature of the ocean is rising, which means the sea rises as the water dilates. And the other cause is the melting of continental ice, mountain glaciers and ice caps that are receding. Last summer, a giant sheet of ice broke off from the Peterman Glacier in Greenland. It was the largest Arctic iceberg to carve in half a century. The amount of fresh water it contained would be enough to supply the US for four months. Scientists estimate that if all of Greenland's ice melted, sea levels could rise by up to six meters. But these are only estimates. Models are still very rough and the projections extremely uncertain. Today we can't tell you whether in 2100 the sea level will have risen by 40 centimeters or by one meter. Here at the Max Planck Institute for Meteorology in the German city of Hamburg, some 100 researchers are working on the ECHEM climate model. It covers land and atmosphere, and a special component is dedicated to ice in the seas. Climate models use mathematical and physical equations to measure the interaction of atmosphere, oceans, land surface and ice. We put in uh, the best of our knowledge uh, in all detailed processes we have got um, of motion of the atmosphere with cloud uh, formation, water cycle and so on, motion of the uh, uh, ocean, so the oceanic currents are there, and the motion of the uh, vegetation, so vegetation is uh, allowed to move uh, over centuries. So everything is in there and it's a very comprehensive model. Predicting the climate is not like reading tea leaves. Scientists have to base their work on the reconstruction of past climate change. To try and obtain the most precise results, they validate their models with present-day satellite data. We are um, using the satellite information as an independent data source um, to the models, and we are basically comparing uh, the model output against the satellite observations. And we need to basically balance between the uncertainty of the observations and the uncertainties of the models. Just next door, at the German Climate Computing Center, part of this giant supercomputer is working on simulations which will be used for the fifth IPC assessment report, scheduled for 2014. The process will take more than a year. In total, the report will contain no less than 20 different models. 
One very important aspect is that you need a um, long-term homogeneous time series uh, from a variety of different um, satellites. And uh, there are a lot of activities going on at the moment to, to build up really long-term stable data sets that can be used for an intercomparison uh, with climate models. Meteorological satellites have been delivering data for more than 30 years. In addition, in the past two decades, the European Space Agency has launched several Earth observation satellites. Recent missions have been dedicated to studying specific pieces of the global warming jigsaw puzzle, such as the water cycle or ice. To make its information more accessible, ESA has founded the Climate Change Initiative. First of all, we'll need to establish algorithm processing systems in order to process the data. Then we'll have to take a detailed look at the potential sources of error, which can affect the way we calculate the rise in sea levels. In the Climate Change Initiative, we are involved as a, as a user of data products. So we will basically use the data products that will be generated by ESA uh, and integrate them into our climate model to assess uh, how we can use that new information source to improve our, our models. The aim of the Climate Change Initiative is to provide precise data to scientists and top advice to decision makers. After a disappointing summit in Copenhagen last year, UN climate negotiations are now entering a new round in Cancun. These annual conferences on climate change are important as their aim is to try to fight global warming. Nothing much has been achieved yet. Well, so far we know that, 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 climate, that humans are the main climate change driver. So then it's now our decision, what do we want to do? Uh, it's a decision of the society, uh, so we have discussed it with politicians, with society, how far do we want the climate to warm? I really agree with the idea that we should do everything we can to try to limit global warming to two degrees, because we may be adaptable, but beyond two degrees, there really are risks for certain countries that are vulnerable. So as a citizen, I agree with that. As a scientist, we can provide some keys. If we want to achieve these goals, we we really need to reduce 1990 emissions by half or even threefold by 2050. Uh, Jean Jouzel and Annie Cazenave are among the eminent scientists taking part in the Cancun summit. But as they say themselves, all they can do is help put the pieces of the puzzle together. Making it policy is a job for politicians.